one, two, three. Hey guys, and welcome back to Beauty in the Bookcase, where every week we take a book and we make a look. In today's video, we will be talking about Heather Morris's Silka's journey. So Heather Morris was actually born in New Zealand and she has lived there her whole life. She actually grew up in a small town and she was mostly surrounded by her family. However, since she was quite young, she had had a fascination with knowledge and storytelling. She was actually told quite often that she was a very good storyteller. And this sort of inspired her to move to a bigger city and actually go to college. So she started out studying political science originally, and then she moved into studying uh, screenwriting. However, while her original creative pursuits revolved around the silver screen and the big screen, all of that changed when she met Lael Sokolov, the tattooist of Auschwitz. So Silka's Journey comes as a type of sequel to the tattooist of Auschwitz. It, it actually follows Silka, who is a secondary character in um, the tattooist of Auschwitz. She was friends with, with Lael and with Gita. I, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that, so I do forgive me if that's wrong. Um, so they were the main characters of the Tattooist of Auschwitz and she was friends with them and this is, she ends up being the main character of the second book. And the story just follows Silka from her time after she's been freed by the Russians from uh, the concentration camp Birkenau, which was kind of like a, an extension of Auschwitz. So it follows her um, after that she gets arrested and so it's it takes place around her life inside of a Russian prison camp like a Russian work prison warning today's video talks about sexual abuse physical violence and trauma viewers discretion is advised so in the tattooist of Auschwitz we learn that Silka had basically started a sexual relationship with a Nazi. Now, this wasn't something that she did really out of her own accord. It was really something she did because it was the only way she could assure her safety. Very much like Lael, who ended up, you know, becoming the tattooist of Auschwitz. It was a a mode of survival. And like we talked last week when I was talking about internment, and how the people who had been working for, you know, as like the leaders of each block and everything were only viewed negatively. Um, I had brought up that a lot of people who actually had survived concentration camps had done so by pretending to be on, on the side of the Nazis. So that's sort of where we're at. So while being in this very abusive, I can't even call it a relationship, it wasn't a relationship. She was, she was being sexually abused by this, this Nazi who had put her in charge of a block where they would put the, like, the weakest people. So since they couldn't work anymore, they were sent over here. They were mostly starved. They wouldn't really even eat when food was sent over. And she, Silka, was essentially in charge of helping the Nazis put these people onto trucks that would take them to the gas chambers, um, where of course they would, they would die. So after the end of the book, the first book, The Tattooist of Auschwitz, um, we have the Russians coming in and basically closing up the camp and awarding people their freedom. However, anyone who was considered to have been a conspirator or you know who had aided the nazis in in one way or another they were sent to prisons which is how um silka ends up in the prison because they did know that she had been essentially spared because she'd been involved in this relationship with um, a Nazi and instead of viewing that as a survival mechanism and a method of you know preservation 
they just saw her as equal to the Nazis. So they weren't understanding or, or forgiving and they sent her to this uh, work camp. So while she's over in this prison camp, she starts to get closer to her cell cellmates. So, well, not really cellmates. They weren't in actual like cells. They each had like a little hut that was just a bunch of beds put together um, with very thin blankets and like a heater and that was it, that's all they had. But um, she starts becoming very close with the women in her hut. She feels very protective of everybody and she's, she's very lucky in that she had an extensive knowledge of different languages, including Russian. So that sort of ends up saving her from actually doing manual labor, which what most of them were doing and what she originally started out doing was sort of collecting coal. Um, and that coal was essentially collected to be sent out to all the people living in Russia at the time. So she's spared from having to do this. And so she starts working at a hospital, but, but even though she was working for the hospital, that didn't spare her from the hungry eyes of men. She was one of the reasons why she ended up in in her position in in Birkenau was because she was this very very beautiful 16 year old, and men were very attracted to her. But of course, you know they didn't really regard her as as a person beyond her physical appearance, and that didn't really change when she got to. To this camp she one of the the first scenes in the in the prison camp involves all the women being forced to get naked and they're sort of paraded in front of like other prisoners like male prisoners and if you were lucky enough to get chosen by one of those men essentially like they serve as your protection from other people being able to like rape you essentially. So uh, she was protected by by a man. She was chosen by one, but you know, of course she'd just gotten out of a horrible situation in which she'd been sexually abused for about three years. And here she was unable to go back home, unable to enjoy her freedom and once more becoming a victim of of sexual violence. So Silka, as I was saying, she develops really good relationships with the rest of her hutmates, especially with a young girl named Josie. She feels very, very, very protective of Josie due to her young age. I think she is the youngest one in the hut. Um, I don't remember if she was 16 as well, but I do know she was the youngest and that really like made Silka kind of feel like she needed to protect her so she wouldn't face the same abuse and the same terrible things that she had had to live through. However, one of her other hutmates, her name is Hannah. Hannah did know about Silka's past. She knew what she had had to survive in in the concentration camps, but she, you know, she knew she didn't really see her behavior as a way to preserve her life. She just kind of saw her as as a traitor because Hannah ha was in the prison because she'd been like fighting. I don't know if she was fighting against just like fascism and communism in general or what, but she was there for being kind of like a revolutionary kind of character. And so she ends up manipulating, constantly manipulating, um, and threatening Silka with essentially exposing what she did to survive and why she was at the camp because none of her hutmates really knew about it. And of course that's that's very difficult because she her past is weaponized against her as a, as a means to silence her. So yeah, Silka's journey is a story of sacrifice, fear, injustice, and love. It's honestly one of the most powerful narratives I've read to date. So the, probably the biggest topic or one of the most central topics 
in this book is of course sexual abuse and guilt. So because as I mentioned she'd spent three years being sexually abused she doesn't really fight it anymore so when the men come into the huts while the other women are terrified and appalled and trying to make it stop she just kind of submits to it she just accepts it not you know in any way consenting to it or enjoying it but she just almost felt like at this point she just deserved it she has a lot of guilt from having allowed herself i guess to to be abused by the nazis so she almost feels like she deserves to be forced into this cycle of abuse and this sort of struggle with guilt extends farther from just the sexual abuse. I think another part of why she just kind of took it was because A, she had, you know, Hannah constantly like reminding her and being like, oh, I'm gonna expose you and everyone's gonna hate you for this. But also she felt a lot of guilt because she felt like she'd betrayed her own people by basically, you know, being, the reason they had to get on those trucks and and had to die and she didn't and you know she had to obviously see a lot of people come and go through her through her block and it was very difficult for her to essentially realize that she helped i guess she felt responsible for all the people who who had died because she'd been in a position to lead them to their deaths, but it wasn't really, you know, her choice. Had it not been her, it would have been somebody else, but she's very, she has a very hard time sort of realizing that she's not the bad guy, that, you know, she was just more a victim of her circumstances. So yeah, all this guilt just continually plagues her and she's she's not very happy in, in her own skin. She sort of hates her body and the fact that everywhere she goes she kind of sticks out and she just feels like she's just constantly going to continue being punished for for her for her choices and she sees everything that she did up to that point not as something that she had no choice in doing or that was just a reaction a natural reaction to wanting to stay alive she sees it as this disgusting dirty thing that she's never gonna get rid of. But that sort of also brings us to another big topic in this story, which is atonement. A lot of Silka's time in the prison is dedicated to her wanting to atone for what she'd done. She wanted to, to rid herself of the guilt she was feeling for having betrayed her people and having slept with with a Nazi and she ends up being able to do that by becoming a nurse at the hospital. Well, she is originally just a regular aide because she knew Russian, as I said, and that was a really, really useful skill in the camp. They needed more people who were able to, to sort of help um, the the prisoners understand what was happening and and you know just to translate and take down notes and all that stuff and so she ends up becoming a nurse thanks to some of the doctors and she sort of makes it her mission while being there to to save as many lives as she can so sort of like reversing the lives that she you know she was trying to save lives to make up for the lives that she'd seen leave her building so that would like help her clear her conscience so silka because of this she's very very astute and she's very observant so she will notice you know if, if a patient wasn't being taken care of properly or just anything that was sort of like 
going on that was a little weird, she'd be really, really good at noticing it and being able to sort of then find a doctor or a nurse, um, somebody more equipped than her essentially, to to handle it and to, to help this ends up being both a blessing and a curse. It does get her in trouble at times, but then it also ends up helping the babies that were being born inside of the prison. So um, they were not being taken care of at all. And Silka discovers this absolutely by chance. And she ends up commenting to the doctor that she's working with. She ends up mentioning it to him and just being like, hey, um, I actually think she might have she either ends up bringing him a baby or like, she's like, hey, could we, when we're not super busy, go over there and have a look because I'm concerned about these babies. And so the doctor actually ends up taking it very, very seriously. And, and they end up, of course, saving a lot of lives. So a lot of the atonement that Silka then begins to experience and a huge reason why she begins to to be able to forgive herself comes from the fact that she was starting to do good and the people around her were very, very kind to her and they continued to point out her strengths instead of her failures, which are all she could see. Now, if there's one thing that's clear throughout this entire story is that Silka suffered a lot of trauma, of course. Um, she would often shut down any time she was asked about her past or why she was there. Um, and she'd even just like zone out and would have flashbacks to, to a lot of memories, both good and bad, but a lot of them were bad memories from when she was in the concentration camp and you can clearly see how affected she is to the point that she she becomes paralyzed at these moments almost. So, you know, she's constantly trying to, to cover up her tattoo. She'll change the conversation and she doesn't really want to allow herself to express any type of sadness. She doesn't want to cry or anything because she still feels like the bad things that happened were almost her fault instead of just realizing that terrible things were done to her and it was out of her control and she did the best that she could with the circumstances that that she was living in so you know having had to live through three years in a concentration camp and and now being in in this prison she was very broken she she really could only see herself as almost as a bad guy, um, instead of being able to recognize that she wasn't a bad guy. She was absolutely the victim of a terrible, terrible regime. And she was a survivor. And to many people, she's become a hero. But due to her inability to recognize this, she's often plagued by thoughts of worthlessness. She doesn't really want to get too close to people because she finds it pointless. She doesn't think that she's worthy of love, of good things happening to her. Which is often why she accepts being mistreated and, and abused because she doesn't actually think that she deserves anything better. And until she starts to realize that she, that she does and she starts sharing her trauma with her friends, that's you know, until then she was not going to be able to recover and to, and to just move on and find something unexpected, which is another huge point of the story, um, which is just about love. And it, it feels strange and almost kind of like crazy and, and surreal to be discussing a story to be discussing a story about, you know, somebody who survived the Holocaust and then was sent into a prison. It feels very strange to be like, but it's a story about love. And I don't mean it in a strictly romantic sense. Um, 
I think it's a story about her learning to love other people, but more importantly, learning to love herself, which sounds super after school special, I know, but it's not done in a cheesy way. You know, she she has so much love from her hutmates as as the book develops and the relationships develop. She she goes from just being this person who's main purpose in the hut is to just bring in more food and little perks such as bandages and, and stuff like that so that they could have more access to just to a better life within the prison and she ends up actually just becoming so important in the lives of all of the women that she lives with and they become important in in hers and she often when she's with them she she does have memories of Lael and of, of Gita in the in the concentration camp and she's just reminded of these beautiful friendships and it's very difficult for her to think about losing these people just as it was difficult when of course when she was in the concentration camp and, and she didn't know you know who was going to be here who wasn't and she was just trying to save not only herself but the people that she loved and then another group of people aside from her hutmates that was responsible for helping her sort of forgive herself and love herself more were actually the the doctors and the nurses from the um from the prison camp a lot of them are are very encouraging they see this untapped potential in in silka and they never make her feel like because they they don't outright know but they sort of assume that she'd come from the concentration camp given that she was polish that she was jewish and just some of her behavior sort of served as a as a tell almost so they they know but they never make her feel bad about it they never force her to talk about it and they just really want to encourage her to continue you know getting more knowledge to become a nurse because they want to see her succeed because even though she doesn't feel like she deserves any type of forgiveness and she doesn't feel like she deserves to move on and to have a good life all the people around her including her hutmates and including the doctors they see a lot of talent and potential in her and they want to see her actually explore that and learn to forgive herself and to let go of of what happened to her and become successful and become happy. But more importantly, Silka learns how to love herself, not just how to love other people or how to let other people love her, but she learns that, she, she finally realizes that she was a victim, that she is a victim. And, and she starts to, she, she stops, I should say, she stops really, seeing herself as this villain in the story and starts to come to terms with the fact that what she did is what a lot of other people would have done had they had the opportunity to do anything to protect themselves and to try and protect the people that they love. Now, when she does end up falling in love with herself and the people around her, she, she starts to realize that her life doesn't have to revolve around paying for a crime and atoning for it for the rest of her life when she really was the victim. So, so you know, at its core, I think Silka's journey is just this this beautiful story about overcoming trauma and and abuse and finding a new lease on life. And just, you know, being able to go on and showing the resilience that so many people have shown for years as survivors. I mean, I was lucky enough to be able to hear a man, a painter by the name of Samuel Bach, who came here to give a lecture, sort of share his own story of survival. And even though she probably never saw herself as a hero, even though she did come to accept that she was a victim, I think that 
this book just shows how much pain and how much struggle the Jewish community had to endure and how resilient and how strong they they were through it all. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a comment to let me know what your thoughts are or if you have any book recommendations for me. If you liked it, please leave a like, subscribe, and turn on that bell notification to make sure that you know exactly when I upload every Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I will see you guys next time.